Selamat siang! Good day! Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel! On this video, I'm going to show you why this island let us keep coming back here. Join us on this little adventure here at the world's most famous surf spot in Asia. Take your surfboard with us and let's enjoy every waves here at Bali, Indonesia. Keep on watching! So guys, join us in our quick adventure to Bali, Indonesia. So we took a flight at 3.25 in the morning. We are actually on standby but we are luckily get a seat on the flight. So we are arrived in Bali! So guys, as of 2023, only ASEAN national can go out visa-free to Bali, Indonesia. Other national should pay 35 US dollars to get a visa on arrival in Depansar Bali Airport. So of course, the first thing to do is to eat and taste authentic Indonesian food. This Indonesian restaurant serves only authentic Indonesian food. It's just around Kuta Beach. So always when we are staying in Bali, this is our third time, we always stay in Kuta because this is just very near to the airport. We're always on standby ticket, so we have to stay nearby the airport. So now we are going to a water temple here in Bali called Tanalot. So guys, after around 45 minutes drive from Kuta, we reach this water temple called Tanalot. Tanalot is a rock formation of the Indonesian island of Bali. It is home to the ancient Hindu pilgrimage temple, Pura Tanalot, literally Tanalot Temple, a popular tourist and cultural icon for photography. In Balinese language, Tanalot means land in the sea. Located in Tabanan, about 20 kilometers northwest of the Pansar, the temple sits on a large offshore rock which has been shaped continuously over the years by the ocean tide. Tanalot is claimed to be the work of the 16th century Dang Heang Niratha. During his travels along the south coast, he saw the rock island's beautiful setting and decided to rest there. Some fishermen saw him and bought him gifts. Niratha then spent the night on the little island. Later, he spoke to the fishermen and told them to build a shrine on the rock. For he felt it to be a holy place to worship the Balinese sea gods. The main god of the temple is Dewa Baruna or Batara Sigara, who is the sea god or sea power. And these days, Niratha is also worshipped here. The Tanalo Temple was built and has been a part of Balinese mythology for centuries. The temple is one of the seven sea temples around the Balinese coast. Each of the sea temples was established within eyesight of the next to form a chain along the southwestern coast. In addition to Balinese mythology, the temple was significantly influenced by Hinduism. At the base of the rocky island, Venomous sea snakes are believed to guard the temple from evil spirits and intruders. The temple is allegedly protected by a giant snake which was created from Niratha's Slandang, a type of sash when he established the island. In 1980, the temple rock face was starting to crumble and the area around and inside the temple started to become dangerous. The Japanese government then provided a loan to the Indonesian government of 800 billion rupiah, approximately 480 million US dollars, to conserve the historic temple and other significant locations around Bali. The entrance ticket cost is 20,000 rupiah for Indonesian nationals, 15,000 rupiah for children, but foreigners tourists have to pay three times the price, 60,000 for adults and 30,000 rupiah for children. 
To reach the temple, visitors must walk through a set of Balinese market format souvenir shops which cover each side of the path down to the sea. On the mainland cliff tops, restaurants have also been provided for tourists. Our next stop is GWK Cultural Park. From Tanalot Temple, it took us almost one and a half hours drive. We had time to nap in our private tour van because we started the day trip at around 11 a.m. But had to wake up earlier than that so we can have our free hotel breakfast. From the main parking of GWK, there is a free shuttle bus that took us to the main entrance and ticketing booth to the cultural park. It didn't take long but it's a long way if you walk. The parking fee and the park ticket is not included in our book trip so make sure to bring enough cash with you when you want to visit this park. The regular park ticket costs us 125 rupiah. This includes a free refreshment and the parking fee is 10,000 rupiah. Garuda Wisnu Kenshana Cultural Park is a tourist destination and attraction located at Ungasan Badung on the island of Bali, Indonesia. About 10 to 15 minutes drive from Ngurarai International Airport, it is devoted to the Hindu god Vishnu and his mount Garuda, the mythical bird who became his companion. GWK designed to be Indonesia's tallest statue. Garuda Wisnu Kenshana was inspired by a story from Hindu mythology about the search of Amrita, the elixir of life. According to that, Garuda agreed to be ridden by Lord Vishnu in return to the right to use the elixir to liberate his enslaved mother. The idea of the monument was not without controversy and religious authorities on the island complained that its massive size might disrupt the spiritual balance of the island and that its commercial nature was inappropriate but some groups approved the project because it will be a new tourist attraction on barren islands. The 75 meters tall and 65 meters wide statue was designed by Nyoman Nuwarta. It sits atop a pedestal to bring the total height of the monument to 121 meters, which is nearly 30 meters taller than the Statue of Liberty in the United States. The completed monument is about as tall as a 21-story building and it weighs 4,000 tons, making it the heaviest statue in the country. After visiting GWK, the next stop supposed to be the Uluwatu Temple. They said the best time to go here is in the afternoon time to see a perfect sunset and to watch a Balinese fire dance. But when we reach the place, there's a very very long queue in the ticket counter. So we decided to just cancel it. Instead, we end the day in Jimbaran, one of the most famous beach in Bali. In here, we had a lovely seafood dinner while watching airplanes arriving and departing Bali as this place is also near in the airport. The vibe here is really good and we had an unforgettable experience. When you are in Bali, don't skip this and you must try this experience. There's a lot of seafood restaurants here in Jimbaran and I can say that the prices here are little high compared on eating on a normal seafood restaurant in Kuta. But the total experience here is unforgettable and priceless. We paid around 1,400,000 Indonesian rupiah on this seafood dinner. You just google it guys and convert it. <laughs>
The next day, we plan to continue visiting the Uluwatu to see what it looks like in the morning time. This time, we just hire a grab to bring us in this place. I expect to see a temple on a cliff, but that time, I don't see it in the way I was expecting it. But maybe it was under renovation. But anyway, we enjoy a breathtaking view of Uluwatu. Uluwatu is a famous cliff in Bali. The Pura Uluwatu Temple is an iconic seaside pagoda that sits on a cliff located in the far south corner of Uluwatu, Bali. This 1,000-year-old Bali temple is one of the island's most famous tourist sites because of its impressive cliffs, sunset views, traditional Balinese fire dance, and the notoriously sneaky Uluwatu monkeys that like to hang out near the temple. Uluwatu Temple is easy to visit from Kuta, Kangu, Sanur, and the other popular tourist areas in Bali. And I rate it as a must-do. The whole experience is very memorable. According to the ancient Balinese manuscripts, the history of Uluwatu Temple dates back to at least the 11th century and probably even earlier. It was established by a Javanese Hindu priest named Empu Kuturan and then expanded by Dangyang Niratha, who spent months meditating by the seaside cliffs of Uluwatu before building the temple grounds that sit there today. Pura Uluwatu was thought to be a portal to heaven, and the Balinese Hindus today still consider it one of the most important temples on the island. Visiting Uluwatu Temple is pretty straightforward and you don't need a guide, although it doesn't hurt to have one. You actually can't go inside the temple itself or see the pagoda from very close. You only view it from the outside while walking along the cliffs. That may be a bummer for some, but I think the cliff views are the best part anyway. It's a bit of mesmerizing Bali magic to see the waves crashing on the 75-meter high limestone cliffs at Pura Uluwatu while the sun sets over the Indian Ocean. The ancient picked a perfect spot for this pagoda. You can avoid some of the crowds by coming earlier in the day like we did, but then you have to deal with the heat. Personally, I think it's best to brave the crowds so you can enjoy the sunset but it's really long queue. All in all, it's one of Bali's classic sites and you can't miss it. We stayed almost half of the day at Uluwatu, so we had our lunch, went back to our hotel, took some rest, and we also did enjoy some time dipping into the pool. After, we walked around Kuti Beach and passed by two markets to buy some souvenirs and watch surfers enjoying the ocean waves while having our fresh coconut water. Guys, that's it for now. There's a lot more adventure to show you. So don't forget to watch the part 2 of our Bali trip. But for now, give me a thumbs up, leave some comment down below, and tap the notification bell so that you're always updated every time I have new upload. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Life is so beautiful, guys. Keep smiling. Thank you for watching and see you on my next video. Bye!